Hi cuties, how are you? I hope you're doing so well. Welcome back to another episode of Nails and Chill. I'm starting to do these more often now because I just find it so fun to just do nails and chit chat with you guys. I make these videos separate from my other videos because I know that some people don't really want to sit here and listen to me talk about life and such. They just want to see me do my nails. But this is for all of y'all who want to sit here with me while I do my nails and chill and chit chat. And in this episode, I'm actually going to be answering questions that you guys gave me. So I put up a community tab post not too long ago. So I think there should be a few questions on there and I will be answering those questions throughout the video. So yeah. If you want to hang out with me, learn a little bit more about me, you know, chill with your girl while I do my nails, let's do it. Let's go. All right, so here we are. I've got my medium coffin tips out because I am planning on doing some medium coffin tips for my nails. And I'm feeling like doing something extra, something kind of, I don't know if you would call it kitsch, but kind of just like a lot going on on each nail, a lot of different stuff happening. And usually in my videos, I kind of point out each product that I'm using along the way. But if I don't end up doing that because I'm too busy answering the questions, I will pop up like a little description of whatever the product is, like the product Product name and such on the screen for y'all and of course it will be in the description box hopefully if I remember to put it there but you can always comment and ask me where I got whatever I'm using if I forgot to put it in the description box I've got my tablet here um I'm gonna be using it to look at the questions so let's get into the first question shall we okay we'll start off with an easy one what kind of music do you listen to and I'm just gonna size out my tips and get my nails prepped and such while I answer this question I have a very somewhat strange relationship with music I must say to be honest if I had to choose between listening to music or watching a YouTube video or listening to music and like watching a movie or listening to music and basically doing anything else to fill the silence, I would pick anything else because I honestly don't like listening to music that much. I know that sounds crazy and some of y'all are probably gonna like not like me after I say that. But I'm not saying that music is bad. I'm just saying that I personally am so, so sensitive. And a lot of the music that I like listening to, I listen to a lot in times of my life that were like really depressing or like I just don't like to think about those times anymore. So when I go back and listen to the music that I used to listen to before, it kind of just brings back all of those feelings that I want to forget and not relive. And it just ends up putting me in like a really kind of dark place. For example, this might come as a shock to y'all, but I love Johnny Cash. God blessed the world when he gave us Johnny Cash. I love Johnny Cash music, like The Man in Black, Highwaymen, Don't Bring Your Guns to Town, A Man Named Sue, Ring of Fire, obviously, Walk the Line. There's a bunch of different songs. I basically just like all Johnny Cash songs. I also like listening to most K-pop. I really like Blackpink. I like some songs by BTS. I like New Jeans. Some of you guys have noticed that the background music for most of my videos is the lo-fi version of popular k-pop songs and they're actually made by an amazing youtuber here on youtube i'll put their name up on the screen also they're always linked in the description they turn popular k-pop songs into lo-fi i love using that music in my the background of my videos because if there's one type of music that doesn't make me depressed and get me all in my feelings it's like k-pop but not only k-pop but like the lo-fi version of k-pop i love it okay so i said k-pop johnny cash what else do i like listening to i like listening to a lot of oldies music or not necessarily oldies but like music from the like 80s and 90s like music that my parents like to listen to um i like some of the beatles songs like blackbird i love the song blackbird by the beatles i really like the red hot chili peppers that that the red hot chili peppers is a band that i can like i really love listening to if i'm in the right headspace if I'm not in the right headspace to listen to it like it'll just make me get down in my feels and like sad <laughs> but red hot chili peppers and then finally y'all are probably either not gonna expect this or like think differently about me when I tell you that I listen to this but um Freddie Dread. if you aren't into rap or like kind of hardcore music or whatever probably don't go listen to Freddie Dread. but um I like listening to Freddie Dread and Ash Nico when I'm in like a really down mood and I 
I usually just like blast it in my headphones when I'm at the gym and push really heavy weights while I listen to Freddie Dredd and Ash Nico. And it just gets me pumped. It gets, gets the dopamine flowing. And then I'm like ready to attack the day. May or may not have had to do that before filming this video. So anyway, to summarize about what music I listen to, basically it's whatever doesn't make me sad at the moment. I really don't like listening to music that makes me sad. For example, yesterday, I didn't really want to talk about this, but yesterday I was feeling really down. Like sometimes things just kind of pile up in life and then there just comes a breaking point where you just need a really good cry. So I started listening to a whole bunch of Johnny Cash and that just sent me into a deep spiral of depression and crying. But you know what? I um was fine and I had a good cry. I drank coffee afterwards. I did a homework assignment to make myself feel more productive. But even if I just drank coffee and went to sleep for the night, I would have been fine. I woke up this morning and I felt so much better. Honestly, sometimes I just feel like so much better and relaxed after having a very good cry. Yeah, so I was honestly overdue for one of those. But yeah, I could talk about what music I listen to and like what my feelings are, or relationship with music is for a very long time because it's very very mixed. Another song that I really love, I think it's called Happy Together by the Turtles and I love that song so much. And Happy Together by the Turtles is one of those songs that like when I have an assignment to complete, I will literally sit at my computer back there. I will sit at my computer and I will play Happy Together by the Turtles in a loop. I'm not even joking, for two hours, two, two and a half hours until my assignment is complete. And when I tell people that I listen to the same song on a loop for two and a half hours while I do my work, they think I'm crazy, but like, honestly, it's the best. Like, you don't get distracted by the song changing. You know that it's a song you like, so like, you don't have to skip through songs. It's great. But anyway, um, I've been talking about what music I like for a very long time now. Uh, basically, to sum it all up, I am very picky about the type of music that I like to listen to, but then at the same time, I listen to very strange... I, I have a very wide music taste and it's always changing and it honestly just depends on what my mood is and, you know, like, I don't know, the circumstances of my life at the time. Whatever is giving me the good happy vibes, whatever is making me feel better, I'm gonna listen to it. One last thing before I move from the topic of songs, there was a point very recently where I was so into Sufjan Stevens. I think that's how you say his name, Sufjan Stevens. Sufjan Stevens, very, I don't even know how to describe it. It's very like poetic. I think it's like folk music almost, but I really love his music as well. One of those ones like Johnny Cash that I can just listen to and I just love it so much. It speaks to my heart. It'll make me sad and I will cry. You guys don't understand. I'm like so sensitive. If I hear a song, like if I'm in the best mood ever and then I go to a restaurant or something and I hear a song playing that I used to listen to during a time of my life where I was very down and very sad and not doing well, I will be in, I will just instantly be in a bad mood and just like, I will even, like, there's been times where I had to put on my noise canceling headphones because I was gonna cry. Like, okay, I'm done talking about music. I'm done, I promise. Let's move on to the next question. Someone's either like using a leaf blower or mowing their lawn or something. I really wanna keep my window open because I love the feeling of spring and summer coming. The weather is so nice right now, but someone is using their leaf blower or their lawn mower or something. And if I have to listen to it, I think I might die. Not to be dramatic or anything, but I think something bad will happen. So I'm just gonna close my window. I'm so happy that it's turning into spring, summer time and the sun goes down later because of the time switch here in the US. You know, we got like daylight savings, that stupid thing where you lose an hour of sleep and then you gain it back and it messes up your whole sleep schedule and everything. But I'm just happy that it's like, what time is it right now? I'm just happy that it's like seven o'clock and it's still daylight outside. It just, so nice for my mental health. Anyway, before I get into the next question, uh, I went ahead and filed up my nails off camera just because I, there wasn't much to do. They're full cover tips. I just kind of cleaned up around the cuticle and sharpened up the edges and made sure that they were all straight and whatnot. And now my fingers look super crusty. So I think I'll put some lotion on so y'all don't have to look at my crusty hands. Some special diamond shimmer lotion. Epic. 
So I'm just going to make sure to wipe my tips off with alcohol, 91% isopropyl alcohol, before I go in with any gel and get any of that lotion off that just got on the tips. Although I kind of tried to keep it off of the tips, so... Anyway, I'm taking my time with each question because I didn't I didn't give you guys a lot of time to give me questions. I only posted this community tab post like a couple hours ago. And besides the fact that some of you um, love me so much, I am pretty irrelevant. <laughs> I only got like two or three questions, you know, that it's okay. It's okay though because they're good questions and I can spend hours talking about them. But that's just, just letting you know. I only got a couple questions, so I'm taking my time with each of them. Anyway, before I start um, decorating the top and doing the nail art, I'm actually just going to go ahead and put a top coat underneath these, just because I kind of like to get that out of the way right off the bat. I am just going to clean the underside and kind of prep it with some acetone and this crusty brush that I reserve only for this purpose. But anyway, as I was saying, um, yeah, I'm pretty irrelevant. I mean, I'm not irrelevant. I mean, okay. In the scale of YouTubers and, you know, the YouTubers who are relevant and have tons of followers, like, they will post a community tab post and they will have, like, multiple replies within the first hour. I am not that YouTuber yet. I have high hopes. That's also the reason why I haven't done any lives yet. Honestly, I just feel like if I do a live, only, like, one person will show up. Because, I mean, like, I'm gonna have to do it at a time that works for me. And then I don't know, like, it's obviously not gonna work for everyone. So I feel like there's only, like, two or three people who would, like, show up to my live. Which would be fine. I'd be cool hanging out with y'all. But I don't know. I feel like it would just make me feel kind of sad and irrelevant. Even though it shouldn't. I know it shouldn't. But it will. So... I do want to do lives though. You keep asking for them. I will do them in the future. It's something I definitely want to do. Maybe when I hit 10k. If I can hit 10k, I'll do a live. How about that? How about that? I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. And when I say something, I keep my word. So 10k, we'll do a live. Okay, so the next the two questions that I have are actually very um kind of similar. The first one is what are your plans for after college? And the second one is, I'd like to hear about your dreams, not the kind that comes to you in your sleep. I have some pretty weird ass dreams, so I'm glad you don't want to hear about those. Anyway, I want to know what you want in life, like marriage, kids, be a boss of your own company, and what kind of company, what's Anne's story gonna be? I think I can group these two questions into one. Let's get into these nails. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it's magic. Whoa. Um, I have new gels from Born Pretty. They are cat eye gels. Cat eye gels. And they're actually really cool. I'm so sad that I kind of suck at cat eye, but I have cat eye gels and I want to use them in this set. Let me, let me just show you all these colors that I'm going to be working with because this is mostly what I'm going to be working with and then the rest is just going to be kind of like charms and rhinestones and maybe some metallic gel liner situation stuff. This is what I'm going to be working with today. I'm kind of going for like a galaxy, dark, starry, metallic. I want you to feel like you're in space with some epic hippie aliens. Yes, that's, that's gonna, that's it. That's what I'm going to achieve with this set. I don't know why, but we're doing it. We're doing it. Epic hippie aliens, okay? That's, that's the vibe for this set. Oh, I was going to put the top coat underneath these and I didn't even do that. So, I should probably answer the question. So first I'll start off by answering what are my plans after college? So right now I am in my third year of college. So hopefully I'll graduate uh, next year. I might have to take some extra classes or some summer classes because I did change my major like kind of drastically sort of recently. It's going to be borderline whether I graduate on time or not, but I'm hoping I do, but it won't be a big deal if I don't. It's really whatever. Um but after college, you know like I have a vague plan and I'm kind of I have like a a hope for what will happen after college, but we'll see what happens. So this kind of ties into what my dream is. I really feel like I am an entrepreneur at heart. I really love making things and just like being my own boss and kind of like creating things and giving people things that make them happy. If that makes any sense, I know that sounds like really cliche, but basically I feel like I'm an entrepreneur and one day I would really love to own my own company slash business. 
this and it would definitely be probably at this point in my life I'm really hoping that it would be some sort of company having to do something with nails whether that be like acrylic making my own glitters I don't know sometimes I just feel like when I go to the store and look for glitters like I can or like on Aliexpress or Shein or Timu like they never have glitters that I really like like a lot and I I just like wish I could make my own glitters like that would be so flipping awesome so back to what I was saying about what I what I want to do after college is after my bachelor's degree I'm hoping that I will be able to do my MBA which is a master's in business administration which will just be two more years and when you do an MBA, part of an MBA, not only are you learning about how to run a business, but you're also part of the MBA program is actually creating and setting up your own business. So I think that that would be something really cool that I could do. But yeah, anyway, that's the vague plan. MBA, hopefully. Business, maybe. YouTube, definitely. That's the plan at the moment. Brief, brief pause to just tell you. So what I'm thinking of doing for the kind of base of these nails is doing like an ombre from the cat eye gel to clear at the end, like clear nail. Like, have you ever seen those nails that are like ombre and they're like clear at the end? I feel like that's really cool. I want to try to do it. So like, let's do it. I'm going to try to do it just with, um, without black first. And then I'm going to maybe add black if I need to, but... Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. That definitely needs something. <gasps> oh, what if I put like purple underneath it? Like dark purple instead of black? Because I don't really feel like putting black under this, but I know it needs some sort of color underneath it. What if I use a sparkly gel and then put the cat eye gel over the sparkly gel? You guys, I think I'm on to something. Hold up. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. Oh my goodness. Okay, I found this black sparkly gel polish that I have from Nail Reserve. Like, excuse me? What? Oh my goodness. This, oh, do you see those sparkles? Are you seeing them? Are you seeing the holographic galaxy sparkles that I am seeing? This is a must. This is a yes. This is a yes. 100% this is what I'm using underneath these. This is, this is happening. Okay, sorry. Uh, we're pausing the questions for a moment because I am very excited about this. I'm very excited about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the black on and I'm going to ombre it down. So I'm only gonna put it on the nail bed part like this. Ooh, and it's like a jelly black too. Oh my, <gasps> bro, oh, I just, oh. guys, I, oh, this black is so pretty. I wanna do like a full set of just this black gel polish now because it's so pretty. Definitely gonna have to go back in there with a tiny brush around the cuticle. But I actually want to try using these new brushes that I got from, I think it was Shein or Timu. To be honest, I at some point bought like a lot of different small orders from Shein and Timu and AliExpress and I kind of just put them all in one box and I wanted to film sort of like a haul video with all of it but I never really got around to it and I just want to use this stuff so yeah. New fluffy ombre brush. Let's let's try it. I think you just kind of use it like a sponge almost and just kind of like Pat and drag, pat and drag, pat and drag. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, this is working so well, actually. I'm gonna like drag the sparkles almost all the way to the tip. Wow, this ombre brush is really fun and <laughs> really makes it so easy. Okay, epic. I think that's good. I'm just gonna take out my tiny little brush and go really close to the cuticle. Really gotta get my head in there, sorry. Wow. 
wonderful. I am giving that a full 60 second cure. Yep. Also, if you are wondering, I do have sunscreen on my hand that I am doing my nails on right now. I put sunscreen on at the beginning before I started using the gel because there's going to be a lot of different layers, a lot of different charms. My hand is just going to be in the UV LED lamp for a while today. And I just like putting on some sunscreen just for extra peace of mind. I know a lot of people think that you don't need it, but you do you, you know? I say you do you, you let me do me, and everyone's happy. I'm not hurting anyone. That black gel polish is so stinking freaking amazing. Wow, like black is one of my favorite colors, not even gonna lie, like black with anything. My favorite color combinations is anything with black, basically. Black and pink, black and red, black and purple, black and white, amazing. Anyway, so I'm gonna be using this a lot. I already know it. Anyway, I'm gonna go in over this with the cat eye gel now, and I'm going to ombre it the same as I did with the black. All right, I really love how this cat eye gel has like the multiple color shift of like the blue and the purple. Those are like my favorite types of cat eye gels. I don't really, I mean, I the cat eye gels with like the one color in the silver have their place, but I like this one. I like the ones with multiple different colors, okay? I like colors. I like shiny things. I like colors. Good vibes, good vibes. All right, so I got my large magnet here and I'm just gonna try to, I don't know, see. Oh, 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 oh shit, oh, oh, oh. Whoa, I wasn't even, wow. Oh my goodness, I wasn't even like expecting that to happen. That is so freaking pretty. Do you see that? <gasps> yes. Honestly, that is really pretty. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Oh, shit. Oh, I ruined it. Why do I do this? I literally make it look good and then I ruin it and then I have to try again. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna go over it. I'm just gonna go over it again. And let's try that again. It was so pretty and now I can't do it again. Okay, I've got the blue shift in there again. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cure it like that because I don't wanna risk losing that blue shift again. Yes, that is so pretty. I like that. Okay, I'm basically just going to repeat that same thing for all of them. Also, is this wrinkling? Do I see wrinkles? No, I think that's just the glitter. D it's not wrinkles. Okay, scared me for a second. Look at that shiftiness. That is so pretty. I love it. I really think the clear end will look a lot better when we top coat them. So I'm going to continue doing this. Basically, this I'm just gonna do the exact same thing for all of them, but using different colors for the cat eye gel part every nail. Okay, so back to the question about what my dreams are. I definitely do have some of the basic dreams that a lot of people I feel like have. I definitely want to get married in the future and hopefully have some little babies. I do want to have kids in the future. I just feel like family is just really important to me especially because I don't make many friends. So yeah, I do really want to have kids so that I can keep, you know, growing my family. Another one of my dreams that I've had like the past couple of years, which I never really talk about this, but I really do love to write. And one day, maybe, hopefully in the future, I feel like a lot of people say this, like when they retire, <laughs> they'll write a book, but I'd really like to write some sort of book. It wouldn't necessarily be fiction or nonfiction, but maybe like I really like writing poetry. Sometimes I have to be in the mood to write poetry, but I've written a couple of poems that I think are pretty good. Um, <laughs> and I do also like to paint. So I think one day it would be really cool if I was able to like publish a poetry book that would be also accompanied by my own artwork. I think that would be really amazing. So that's definitely one of my dreams is to be published one day. Not one of my most important dreams though, just one of those dreams that I have. Obviously to grow my YouTube channel and be able to, you know, spend a lot of time on my YouTube channel because I really love doing YouTube. 
I love making the content, obviously. I love doing my nails. I love editing the videos also. Like, editing the videos, I really enjoy that part. And then seeing you guys' comments is just like, no matter how frustrated I got during the video or the making of the video, if it wasn't exporting properly, if I feel like the thumbnail is bad, if I feel like the video wasn't my best video, no matter what happens, y'all's comments about how you look forward to my videos, about how I make your day better or help you while you're going through a tough time because I know what it feels like to be going through a pretty tough time and to have a YouTuber who you love to watch just like brighten your day a little bit and it just makes me so happy that I can be that for some of you guys and that just like gives me so much fulfillment in my heart. So I don't really care if I ever get to millions of subscribers or if I become super famous. Honestly, in my heart, I'm not lying to you. I'd prefer not to be, you know, like super, super widely known. I think that that comes with a lot of work and a lot of its own problems. Just seeing other celebrities and other really big YouTubers. My like biggest dream is that my channel will just go grow super fast so that I can just always be working on it like all the time, basically. <laughs> Other than those things, another one of my dreams, which I am always working towards and praying about, is I would really love to be mentally stable someday. <laughs> it's not that I'm not mentally stable, but I just think that sometimes, I just, what I really want is I don't need to be happy all the time. I just want to feel content with my life because I know it's not realistic to be happy all the time and really honestly in order to feel true happiness I do believe that you need to feel sadness and everyone feels sadness um, which is why happiness really exists because if there was no sadness then happiness would just be like living and there would be no happiness because there would be no sadness and there would be no sadness if there was no happiness sorry anyway another one of my dreams is to become is to be content with my life and to reach a point where i don't constantly worry about things and i know that that's honestly very not realistic which is why it's one of my dreams okay it's one of my dreams it's one of my hopes and dreams is to be completely content with my life and to just not constantly worry about things and to not compare myself, to not be jealous. So yeah, just to become a better person, I guess, and to just be like content with my life. Like I don't need millions of dollars. Like a million would be, a million would be nice, okay? Like God, like a million would be okay. But like, I don't necessarily want to be the richest girl in town and have the biggest house and have the nicest car. I just want to be content with my life. And I say that because I know that a lot of times the things that I, in my experience, in my short 20, almost 21 years of life, things that you think you want really bad and the things that you think will make you happy when you get them and then you realize that it's not everything that you imagined it would be and you're not happy or you're happy but you're not content and you still always want more you just realize that like really nothing nothing physical like in this life can give you that like content and peace in your heart that i really am trying to get better at having besides getting married and having little baby kids and all of my family that I love living as long as I live so that I never have to lose any of them because that's honestly my biggest fear. I'm honestly more afraid of people that I love dying than I am of dying. Like to be honest, it's not that I want to die, but I'm just not afraid to die because I know I like I'll wake up in heaven and it's fine. And sorry, I'm rambling. This was a loaded question. Okay, y'all can't be asking me questions like this and expect me to answer it in just like a portion of a video. Like I could make a freaking entire hour and a half long video just on this subject. But anyway, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, my dreams for my life is to to get married to someone who is my very best friend and who I love with all of my heart and for them to live and be by my side as long as I live and for all of my loved ones who I love, my parents and my family and my close friends to also live as long as I live, to maybe write a book one day, possibly have my own business and overall just to be content and peaceful with my life. 
that's what I want. That's my dream. Maybe future Anne in 10 years, after 10 years of being on YouTube, because I'm planning on being here for 10 years or longer, okay? Unless something happens to me, I'll be here. Maybe in 10 years I'll make another video, update you on my hopes and dreams, where they're at. Okay, I need to stop ranting about that now. I really need to stop ranting about that now. Okay, so here is how they're looking. Um, I actually realized, like, once I got t to this nail that I could create this super cool effect with the circular magnet. Let me show you. This circular magnet. And I just, like, love this cool, like, I don't know, netty, webby looking type the swirl thing that's going on because of this um, circle magnet. So I actually went back over all the ones I had done previously and did the thing with the circle magnet. But anyway, now we are ready to do some cool, fun uh, designs on top. What did I say? I said that I wanted these to be alien space hippie nails. Um, honestly, I don't know how hippie these are going to be. I think what I kind of meant was Y2K, maybe cyberpunk. I don't know. There's a lot of different directions that this can go right now. But I've been looking on Pinterest. I'm just going to do the thing. I'm just going to do it. I'm probably not going to be explaining very much what I am doing because I have another question to answer. But you'll be watching me do it, so you don't need me to explain. It's all good. The next question, and I think the last one, is, um, they say, All my life I've struggled with ADHD and I learned in my 20s how to put my energy and focus into multiple hobbies. I do my own nails, make jewelry, crochet, paint, etc. Same girl. I've noticed we are extremely similar in that aspect. We are. <laughs> and I just want to know what made you get into all the crafty girl stuff and how do you focus your attention and not get burnt out from all your activities? Whenever y'all say that you are excited to watch my videos when I post and that I inspire you, I'm like just like blown away and it just like literally makes me so happy. So thank you guys. I'm so glad that I can be here for you. Because, like, we're all human. We're in this life together. Life is life. Life is, like, you know, everyone experiences pain and suffering. You know, I'm not going to start ranting about that again. All I'm going to say is I love you guys. And as much as I inspire you, you guys inspire me. And you guys give me so much fulfillment and happiness. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to start doing these nail designs. And let me tell you how I became a crafty biatch. Okay, yeah, so I've mentioned this before in another one of my videos, but I also have ADHD, and I actually didn't get diagnosed with it until this past year, um, mostly because, though, every time I went to the doctor and told them I was having issues feeling very nervous, feeling very fidgety, feeling very hyper, getting very irritated, like, very easily, they would ask me, um, what my grades were, and I always had straight A's when I was in high school and in middle school, like, um, I have a Middle Eastern father, okay? If you know, you know. I was getting good grades, okay? There was no option to get bad grades. So they always just wrote it off like, no, you have anxiety, not ADHD. But anyway, I got diagnosed with ADHD this past year because I finally went to a neuropsychologist and actually got like the full three hour testing done. So, um, she diagnosed me and basically, yeah. I have ADHD. I grew up with undiagnosed ADHD and I think I've talked about this before, but when I was younger, during the summers, and just like in general all the time, I didn't really play any sports. I didn't have a lot of friends, and um, parents low-key, paranoid, very strict. I didn't like go a lot of places. I pretty much just stayed home all summer. And I would get, naturally, a child with ADHD who was just stuck in the house all summer. I would get extremely bored, like to the point where I was throwing like tantrums and crying because I was so bored. So my mom would always encourage me to do like arts and crafts and naturally I was just kind of like an artsy person. I love to draw and like make things and my mom used to have a bunch of beads and I used to like bead necklaces and bracelets with her when I was like in elementary school. So like during the summers my mom would uh, take me to Michael's or Joann's and I just remember being so excited when I was in like elementary school and middle school and high school and now to go with my mom to Michael's and Joann's that's just like always been my favorite thing to do and so she would always buy me uh, stuff to do my hobbies and I used to draw a lot um, so yeah that's just kind of how I got into it I was just very bored when I was younger at home and so naturally I just 
found things to do to occupy my mind because I was so insanely bored. But yeah, like you, I jump around from hobbies a lot. I also have a lot of hobbies and I definitely know what you mean by kind of like um, managing all the hobbies. And to be honest with you, I have like a lot of different hobbies, but honestly, like I haven't crocheted anything in a really long time. I haven't drawn or painted anything in a really long time, even though drawing and painting used to be like the number one thing that I did. I like drew and paint as my main hobby for like, uh, like at least four years. So like for me, I found that doing my nails and making YouTube videos, I wanted that to be like my main focus. And it really helps the fact that I have my YouTube channel because when I post a video, I get views, I get comments. It encourages me to keep posting more of the same content because I want to keep getting better. That's kind of one of the reasons I think that I got really um, focused into nails. Otherwise, it might have ended up like one of my other hobbies that I just kind of set to the side while I move to my next hobby and then come back to it later. But anyway, as for my other hobbies, they kind of just remain in the background. I never like forget about them, um, but I kind of just go back to them when I feel like it. And I feel like there's kind of like this thing. I don't really balance all my hobbies, to be honest with you. I kind of just have them and they're there when I want to go back to them. Like for a, a while, I was sewing a lot. I sewed so many purses. So yeah, I think it's really good to have a lot of hobbies. And naturally, when you have um, ADHD, just in my experience and what from the research I've done, you will get really into a new hobby and then you will buy all the stuff for it. You'll be super into it, like super, you'll have like this impulse, like this need to do it and you'll get really into it for a while and then you'll move on to the next hobby or the next one. And like, so I think that you just need to not be hard on yourself and think like that you need to be practicing all of your different hobbies all the time. Um, sometimes I feel like that, sometimes I haven't painted in a really long time and I think like, wow, I haven't painted in so long or drawn anything really in so long. I worked so hard to build that like skill and now I'm not even using it. It's gonna get bad. Like I'm not an artist anymore. I'm not a painter anymore. Um, I don't have the right to say that I draw or something like that. But to be honest, like that's total bullcrap. It's bullshit, okay? You can be a nail artist, a painter, a crocheter, a gardener, a seamstress, a photographer, a jewelry maker. You can be whatever you want to be and only do that hobby once a month, once a year, whenever you feel like it, okay? Like, don't put pressure on yourself to do all of your hobbies equally. Do them as it comes to you, you know? When the impulse comes to you to do it, do it. I was so into clay sculpting when I was younger. I would, like, clay sculpt all day. And I didn't do that for so long. And then all of a sudden I got the impulse to do clay sculpting again. And I sculpted this little flower and turned it into a necklace. And I love it so much. And also in my experience, even though you don't practice something for a long time, like you never lose that skill. That skill is always there. And even after a long time of not using it, just maturing and kind of learning more about other things sometimes honestly makes you better at that hobby that you haven't practiced just because you've kind of aged and you can see things from like a different perspective. Anyway, I don't even remember what the original question was. I am just ranting on and on. Uh, hopefully I answered your question though. I have lots of hobbies. I don't do all of them all the time. I do them when I feel like them and uh, don't be hard on yourself because you can be everything you want to be at once. I feel bad for future Anne who has to edit this because I feel thoughts that I want to say and I just need to stop talking. I love you. Good luck with all your hobbies. Show yourself some love and give yourself some grace. We're doing great. We're doing good. I think that these are actually looking super epic. Like, I'm really happy with them. I'm so excited to top coat them. I'm so excited to top coat them. Okay, here's the top coat I'm gonna be using. And let's just top coat these babies up. I am so ready to be done with this set. Like I swear, by the end of every single set that I do, um, my back or like my upper back, like my traps are hurting. Like they hurt. 
They hurt every single time. I think I need to get a new chair. If y'all have a good chair that you use, like if any of y'all are nail techs out there or you just like have to sit at a desk a lot or like you sit doing your nails or painting or whatever for long periods of time and your back also starts hurting. If y'all found a chair that you love that like makes your back not hurt, I'd love to hear about it because I'm so tired of my back hurting after every single video I film, but it's okay, it's totally worth it. Just do like some back stretches and I'll be fine, but it would be nice if it didn't hurt, you know what I'm saying? My birthday's coming up, maybe I'll try to get someone to get a chair for me. <laughs> I feel like these nails where like every single nail is a little bit different, but then it all comes together at the end. I feel like when I'm in the midst of doing each nail, I'm kind of like not very happy with each nail individually, but then once I finish all of the nails and look at them all together, I end up being super happy with it, how it turned out at the very end, all of them together as the set. So I feel like whenever I do these kitsch nails or like a Y2K or whatever this style is called, I don't even know, to be honest, like I don't know what style this is. I'm not versed in styles, but I feel like it's a very trust the process sort of thing because it's like every single time I'm like not happy with it until the very end and then I look at them all together and I'm like hey this is actually kind of an epic set. Alrighty here are the finished nails top coated and all. I honestly adore how these came out. Honestly I think this is the prettiest set of cat eye gel nails that I've ever done. I love them and I feel like these are the kind of set that I'm going to fall more in love with as I look at them. Like look at how cool that cat eye shift looks especially like in these little um droplet thingies. Like look at that. That's just so pretty. Oh my goodness. I love them so much. Definitely one of my favorite sets that I've ever made so far. Anyway I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and and I hope that I answered your questions well. I hope that you enjoyed listening to me rant. Not rant, but I hope, hope that you enjoyed listening to me talk about stuff while I do my nails. <laughs> if you did enjoy this video, definitely give it a like. It really means the world to me and helps me out a lot. It'll help me achieve my dreams. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope that you are having the most amazing day, night, week, life. Sleep well if you are going to sleep, cutie. I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye. Mwah.